You're being accused by the Providence Police on November 11th in count one, assault with a dangerous weapon. Count two, assault with a dangerous weapon. Count three, committing a crime of violence while armed. Count four, committing a crime of violence while armed. And count five, carrying a firearm without a license. They are all felonies, so I will let no plea enter as to all of these charges and put everything down for March 11th. Your Honor, the state is recommending uh, above bail guidelines in this particular case. The particular recommendation is $200,000 with surety as well as a waiver of extradition. This is based upon the fact that this defendant was previously on bail set on October 3rd of 2021. That bail was set up $100,000 with surety to an offense that took place on September 26th of this year in which the defendant shot a male individual in the head in the parking lot of Walgreens at 333 Atwells Avenue. A 357 caliber pistol was used in that matter and that gun was not recovered. As to this case, Your Honor, approximately four weeks after bail was previously set, this defendant pulled a 38 caliber revolver from his waistband, pointed at two Providence patrol officers. The, pa the patrol officers then took cover while this defendant barricaded himself in a barber shop. Police backup arrived and secured a perimeter, then negotiated for approximately an hour and 40 minutes until this defendant surrendered. Once he surrendered to the custody of Providence Police, this defendant indicated that he shouldn't have given himself up. A subsequent search of the uh, barber shop pursuant to a search warrant ended up locating a 38 special revolver. That revolver was loaded with six live rounds. Along with that revolver, there were several uh, boxes of ammunition totaling 194 rounds of 38 special ammunition. This defendant has seven total cases in Rhode Island, as well as six contacts in the state of Maine, including one robbery. However, no dispositions are indicated on the triple I. This defendant has two failure to appear. Given the extreme dangerousness of both offenses involving guns and the limitations of Article 1, Section 9, that prevents the state from requesting a hold without bail on the charges itself, I believe that $200,000 with surety is appropriate, despite being above bail guidelines. The gentleman understands he's probably going to be held without bail on 46G, so uh, in a sense, bail on the new charge is uh, not paramount. I ask the court to set the same bail that was set on the first case, and the understands will be held on the on the bail violation. Well, on 219358, this defendant was arraigned on October 4th. It looked like a hundred thousand dollars with surety bail was set on that case. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And that bail obviously was posted. It was posted by a bondsman. Where you promised to keep the peace and be a good behavior. These new allegations have brought that bail into issue and I'm, I'm comfortable on 62219358 holding this defendant without bail as an alleged bail violator. It goes down November 19th for a status with no witnesses. The court finds that bail therefore is moved on 2110653. That being said, the Office of the Public Defender can always move at any point down the road to try and adjust the bail based upon the facts of the case, the unique background of this defendant, including but not limited to ties to Maine, bench warrants out his arrest, and a long record I'm comfortable setting $200,000 with surety on 2110653. That can always be reviewed down the road.